Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey, it's Madison Chase with After Buzz TV. And if you're online, go to youtube.com backslash After Buzz TV. And we're actually going to tweet live. So if you have live questions for Nadine Ellis, go to at Nadine Ellis. And I am at, at Madison Chase Fit. So you already know who my special guest is. We're going to go to a wide shot so you can see the beautiful, talented, lovely dancer, actress, choreographer. Graceful, beautiful, talented. There she is. She's me? trying to be modest. Are you, are you I don't sure? Know. Are you sure? I, it's You're totally, talking about me? Okay. I'm totally okay. talking about you. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll take yes. it. I'll take it. <laughs> so we have her, Nadine Ellis, in the studio. Hey. I'm so glad you made it. How are you, girl? And, and we go way back. I so know. We do. We we're going to start with where we met. We met in acting class. Yes. We were in uh, Michael John Gonzalez's yes. class mm -hmm. in North Hollywood, California, uh -huh. in the Valley. In the Valley. And, uh, and and great class, right? Great, it was class, a great class. Really talented people. Yes. Learned a lot in that mm -hmm. class. I and, did too. And met the beautiful Madison. So well, it's, it's not there about it me. It's okay. about you. <laughs> and really tapped into Nadine. Yes, it's, it's all about Nadine. <laughs> now, one thing I thought was interesting, Nadine, when you look at someone like Jamie Foxx, like he originally mm -hmm. wanted to be a singer, mm -hmm. and he just happened to be this amazingly funny guy. Right. But so, is that your story? Did you really want to be an actress, and you just happened to go to a performing arts high school? and you were talented and that no, way as well. No, no, okay. actually not. I mean, dance was, it, it was and still is my first love, for okay. sure. It mm -hmm. was the it was the first thing, you know, as a kid, you're searching, trying mm -hmm. to find what it is that you do. Everyone mm -hmm. was like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. And mm -hmm. I was like, um, <laughs> yes. I didn't quite have that, right. like that, cl that clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, I was saying like, oh, I want to be a doctor because I knew that's what my mother wanted to hear, you know, oh, but it wasn't really, it wasn't really what my, my, my passion. Right. And so um, it wasn't until 13, I started dancing pretty late for girl so it wasn't that until is, yeah it wasn't until 13 that mm -hmm. I really really jumped into dance and, and found that and realized it was my thing mm -hmm. it was the thing I did well mm -hmm. um, and it came very naturally to me mm -hmm. so that was really my love and luckily I had an angel Terry Rosenberg shout out to Terry Rosenberg hey, Terry. in uh, Long Island okay. uh, New York mm -hmm. um, who really took me under her wing and okay. said you're a dancer Wow. That's kind of who we, and what you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to, to private school, to, okay. to Catholic school. Mm -hmm. nah. <laughs> I went to Catholic school too. It's I listen. Right? It is what it is. I'm yeah. very grateful. I wouldn't be the Me person too. I am today without all that, mm -hmm. right? But um, thankfully, she called my parents in for a meeting and said, yeah, so she's a dancer and she should perform. She should audition for performing arts uh, high school. So I was okay. like, okay, great. Yeah. And okay. so that kind of took me where I am right now. But after high, after high school and going mm -hmm. into college, there was always a pull. Like I would see, there would be certain things that I would see. I remember seeing Diana Ross and Mahogany oh, and Lady Sings the Blues. One of my favorite movies. I thought, yeah, I love that. And my I just thought, movie. like, mm -hmm. like it just moved me yes. in a way. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I want to. I was just pulled to it. I didn't right. know what it meant. What it. I just knew I was pulled to it. So. Right. In college, I went, maybe acting. But I just at that point, I thought, like, everybody's doing it already. Like, right. everyone in my category was already doing it. Like, right. I knew that much from dance, right? Like, you know about categories. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, oh, Gabrielle Union's already doing, Tisha right. Campbell's. Like, like right. all these women that I grew up watching mm -hmm. that were in my age range mm -hmm. were already doing it. And mm -hmm. And then I went, what am I, what, why would I shut myself down? So I just went and took some classes mm -hmm. and really liked it. And my, a, an acting teacher in New York was like, you're, you're pretty good. You should yeah. probably keep doing this. And yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just kind of, <laughs> <You're like, "Whatever, laughs> right. keep dancing, you know, yeah. and I was, I was still dancing and mm -hmm. went to, went to college. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, that's what really brought me out here to LA and, 
and I thought, yeah, I think this is the way to go. It was a conversation with my, my father, of all people, who oh, was wow. a very traditional Jamaican yeah. man, uh-huh. um, who you know said, listen, so you can't dance forever. What are you going to do? Good, good question. And I was Daddy. like, you're right. You're right. I was like, um, well, you know, I think I think I may want to act, and I think I'm kind of good at it. He mm-hmm. said, well, wh- what do you have to do to make that happen? I said, I think I have to move to L.A. That's kind of where TV and film happens. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, when are you going? And wow. Huh? <laughs> You're like, oh, what happened now? I'm yeah. sorry. Who exactly are you? And sure enough, like a week later, I got in touch with a choreographer who had hired me for a Michael Jackson gig in, in um, on HBO in New York. Okay. And he was doing a show here called Motown Live. He was choreographing a show. And I found out through some friends that mm-hmm. he would, they were looking for two more girls. Mm-hmm. And so I said, hey, I think I'm moving out to L.A. And right. I hear you have this, the, right. you need two more girls. Right. And he said, send me any video that makes you look like Diana Ross. Oh, wow. Huh? You're like, in Diana Ross. There it is. Full circle. Like, full circle. Come That's on. Yeah. <laughs> and so sure enough, I got some video together from a show I did on Viva, uh, it was called Viva Variety on Comedy Central. Wow. That it was like kind of a Tina. So mm-hmm. it was like shimmy shaky. Right. And I was like, I'll send that. And right. I sent it and he called and said, you got the job. You got to be out here. And you, rehearsal starts in three weeks. And I was like, well, ah. Oh, packed good. up the stuff and yeah. moved on out. Oh, you packed up all of your stuff. All of my you stuff. You were like, I'm, and I'm this out. Is it. <laughs> and I'm out, kids. And here I was, oh, LA, wow. without the the ticket back. You know yeah, that feeling. The one way. Yes. For those, for anybody who d- has done yeah. the bi coastal mm-hmm. kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll go a little bit and I'll come mm-hmm. back. You know, there's always the mm-hmm. safety of like, oh, I have the other side of that ticket. But right. once I remember sitting on my, I was staying with a friend, Terrence, and I was sitting on her, um, her stoop. And I just remember thinking, there's no, there's no return ticket. This yeah. is it, you oh, know. Oh man, mm. yeah, it's worked out okay. I'm not yeah. mad at it. You're, LA's you're been good. Not, yeah, LA's LA has been, been good. great for you. It it's has been, been really, really good to me. It so has. out of all the people, you said Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah come on. You got a chance to meet him. That's so incredible. He's one of my favorites. Like when you think about someone who is truly an artist. Yes. And yes. truly gifted and truly born to do the thing that they did. Right. Or do. Right. He is that person. Absolutely. Just such a performer, you Mm -hmm. know. And for me, growing up, I would, you know, there were pictures on every single patch of wall Mm -hmm. to the point that I started moving up to the ceiling. And that's when my father said, no. No. (laughs) No ceiling. Okay. So when I got the job, I was Mm -hmm. like, what? What? (laughs) And uh, we were doing, uh, unfortunately, the job never happened. It was an HBO, it was the HBO special that Michael was doing. where he got sick. I don't know if you remember. This was years ago. Mm-hmm. He got really sick, and uh, and the the show was canceled. But we got to rehearse with him, you know, oh, for a couple still of days. Oh, you got a chance to be that in his was, presence. It was full out, and you know, when he does rehearsals, it's like it's full, full out, like yeah. full hair makeup, the yeah. whole deal, because he wants to know what it feels like, looks like, and all that. Yeah. And uh, and we were playing cats. We were four girls. We were playing cats. Mm-hmm. So we were wearing these black patent leather unitards wow. with these rip away tops that you know everyone had a different color like bra underneath and and uh so we were just like super se- it was amazing it was super wow. sexy and i was the cat he was sitting on a, a a park bench under a light and i was the cat that came through his legs and i remember going through his legs going i'm touching his ankles i'm touching his ankles <laughs> it's michael jackson <laughs> it's michael jackson so you I'm were like naomi ankles. campbell in in her in i the wish i were naomi campbell I'm but a- <laughs> yes i was as close to naomi campbell <laughs> as i probably ever will get <laughs> Speaking of which, did you see her on Empire the other night? You know what? I, she looked phenomenal. I mean, she, she always is incredible. looks. Like, out of all the women, like, the body that I strive for is Naomi Campbell's body. Like, she's got the perfect, you don't know, I used to, I have a dance background, too. Oh, so I, I trained know at Juilliard. That? Yeah. Okay, wow. But, How did I not know I that know, about you? I don't you. talk about it. That's why I thought it was so interesting, wow. like, the parallel of performing arts high school. Yeah, I went to a performing arts high school in Dallas. Right. But anyway, like, Naomi Campbell has, like, a perfect perfect when it comes to like a ballerina's body like she's got the perfect dancer's body yeah. it's it's really upsetting yeah it is. i mean and the face come on gorgeous not aging <laughs> at, at all. all i'm like right. what, what are, are you doing? doing what are you drinking naomi we need to know this. right but this is about you nadine so yes let's sorry talk about sorry i digress yeah, yeah, we're, sorry. we're not digressing yes pussycat dolls pussycat dolls. now are you the only african-american pussycat well doll? let me give a little bit of information okay, about the, the dolls information. okay so i moved to as i said moved to la mm-hmm. got that job motown live mm-hmm. from there i uh, they were making some changes and I found out about another audition for another show called Happy Hour that okay. was on USA Network. Okay. 
the creator of the Pussycat Dolls was the choreographer. So oh. while we were working, she okay. was like, oh, I love, I love your energy. Right. You know, come, come, you should come check out the show. Mm -hmm. I'd love to add you into the show. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, I didn't know what burlesque meant. Yes. And I was like, Mm. And I think I had the same reaction a lot of people do. I was right. like, I'm "Are you naked?" Right. Like I wasn't sure what that. Tassels on my it, nipples. I don't. I I, grew, I went to Catholic school. <laughs> right. you know? And so um, I went. I checked it out. and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So the show had been happening for about I think six years at that point. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it was really kind of it was just working dancers that okay. really loved this burlesque show right. and the style and Super the creativity, sexy. Yeah. The mm -hmm. sexy without being like stripper Raunchy. you yeah. know what i mean mm -hmm. and i know that that term has changed a lot over the years right. but um it, it wasn't it wasn't in service of men as much as it was in service of you yes you empowering know? women and feeling yeah. amazing about yourself yeah. and so I, I saw it i was like i'm i'm totally in so right. then i did the show for about five years okay and uh as the show started to grow and more interest and more mm -hmm. money came in into the play uh, she was really convinced, you know, you have to name six girls so that when people hear the term mm. pussycat dolls, it's they have a very specific idea gotcha. of what they look like. Because the, up until that point, there are probably, you know, there are probably 60, 70 pussycat dolls. Oh, you know what wow. I'm saying? Girls that would just rotate okay, in and out of the show mm -hmm. that were amazing dancers, amazing performers and okay. kind of fit the bill. Um, but then when she had to name and again, I'd been the show, you know, there were a lot of girls who would come and do it once and they, they were like, I'm out. You know? right. And uh, because I'd been one of the girls that had been there for so long. She and she named the six. Wow. I was the, yes, I was the black girl. I was yes. the black. Hey, was like, uh, the so old. you're like the uh, yeah. the Josephine Baker or the I okay? Mean, yes, I think, like, I think Josephine would might slap me in the face <laughs> for that. But yes, yes, I was yes, I was an in, 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 I was an that. innovator. You yes, I was one of yeah. the the first. Yes, yes in I terms was. of the face. But there had been there had been several black girls before okay. that. So okay, yeah. But when she named the Pussycat Dolls, you were the I first African American, yeah. so you could add that to your IMDb page. Yes, right. Exactly. Yes, you should add that. Okay. <laughs> so fast forward, Pussycat Dolls, everybody knows you. Mm -hmm. And you're in and out of like really great shows. You said Comedy Central, mm -hmm. other huge networks. So people mm -hmm. probably started to know you and see your face. So mm -hmm. how did the acting, I know you've been taking acting classes and preparing. Right. So right. your first big acting role. Let's talk about Let's Stay Together on BET. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and yes. I, I read that you said that pretty much you wanted to play kind of a character that had redeeming qualities. I That's always been a, a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as an actor, I don't know if you necessarily have the, uh, the ability to know everything that you're going to play, right? right? Because it's, it's uh, you know, my story is your story. Your mm -hmm. story is, you know, anyone who's watching out right. there, you know, we're, we're all human beings, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. But um, for a long time, and definitely a lot of the stuff that I was being sent out for, I really kind of felt I was getting pigeonholed mm -hmm. into a certain selection, a certain grouping. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like any wild animal, you put her in the corner, they're gonna, gonna come out fighting. Uh, pull out the claws. Right. So <laughs> I was really very, I was very adamant about mm -hmm. wanting to play um, not the hooker, right. <laughs> and not, right. not the crackhead, crackhead mom, not right. the, you know, not the- Section eight mom. Not yeah. the, you know, the girl who, you know, every, everybody runs through in the neighborhood. Like, right. and I really felt that that was a what lot of what we were getting, you know, mm -hmm. like, thank goodness. Like when I first moved out here, mm -hmm. the, the landscape of what we see on television and film now, like just Completely was not changed. us, yeah, you scandals. know, mm -hmm. I mean, Scandal had Shonda to get away Rimes, with murder, yeah. Sleepy Hollow. You yeah. see these shows. I mean, yeah. New Girl has two black men on that show right. now. Like right. what? You right. know, it's mm -hmm. it's really a. a the golden age of television. It's mm -hmm. a really exciting time to be an artist mm -hmm. where they do allow you to play a range because you are a human being right. and we are all connected and we all have very similar and very different points of views and, mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, you know, things that happen in our lives. So right. it's, uh, so for me, yes, it's redeeming qualities, but now because I feel like the world has opened up a little bit more, mm -hmm. I, it, I can, it, you know, it's only when you feel like you get put in, you they put you under a cup right? and that you can only play those parts, it mm -hmm. really makes you kind of push back from that. Right. So so now that there's a, we've opened up a little bit more, then yes, maybe I would play 
the crackhead who is now the senator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The crackhead you that know. goes to college and gets her master's. As long as there's a transformative right. message right. And, and story there, that's mm-hmm. what excites me. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The climax and the, the change and the beginning, triumph. middle, and end. I don't yeah. want to feel like we're on a straight line. Who wants to watch that? I don't right. Know. Right, no. which is interesting too, because you actually played a doctor, and you said that's kind of what your mom wanted you to play or be right. growing up. Like there it you, is. That's what you told her. She got everybody got everyone got what they wanted. Yes. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So let's talk about your new project, which I yes. think is very, very interesting. Yeah, because African Americans typically don't like scary movies. And this is interesting because it combines the thing that most people like to talk about, relationships Mm -hmm. and love, Mm -hmm. and the things that we most fear, that love can drastically go wrong. Right. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) So tell us about this project on TV One. Yes. It is called The Fear Files, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's the second installment. They did one last year. Mm -hmm. uh, And my storyline, it's kind of... um, I guess the the closest thing that it would be akin to would be like the um, Tales from the Crypt. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember those kinds of like those stories of woe and like, oh, and then she died. (laughs) (laughs) But with like funny kind of like, you know, Mm -hmm. twerky edges. Now, my particular story doesn't have a funny edge to it, but... um, you know, it's a young, I'm a young woman who, mm-hmm. who meets a young man at a mm-hmm. bar. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, the sparks fly immediately. Uh-huh. And, you know, like I think with a lot of women, there's something mysterious that she doesn't know if it's a matter of whether she can trust him or not, mm-hmm. or has he been, has his heart been broken? Right. Can I heal you a little right. bit? Can that I help she's, you? right, yeah. that she's pulled to him, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, there's a little pushback from him uh-huh. and she, it kind of throws her, but she's still intrigued. So, right. um, so you know, just a great, great character, so much fun mm-hmm. to play. And for me, I'm a huge sci fi girl. And I get so mad when people say that black people don't like. I do I think, too. I, lo- I love sci fi. I, I mean, I don't know where those numbers came from. I and don't maybe, either. I don't know if those are legitimate numbers, but like, I know so many people Me who, I mean, the reason why those films that we all love to go see and get, mm-hmm. have that little bit of jump mm-hmm. or, you know, whether it's sci-fi, thriller, or suspense, right. I mean, it's our money going right. into the theaters as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think as long as it's good, yes. I, th- I think that's where we've kind of fallen off before, where I think that when we've seen black thrillers, black, uh, black suspense stories, they're a little on the cheesy side, right, you know? So right, yeah. so TV One is really taking a step forward and, and really, you know, putting these stories in a real life situation yes. um, where you get a little jump, but yeah. you know, and it, I think it's a really good one. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. And it comes, it debuts tomorrow. tomorrow night, Friday okay. the 13th. Friday the 13th. Uh, 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 uh. That's such a great, <laughs> that's a o'clock. great day that they took advantage of the there kind of is. scary date. There it is. And and adding love to yeah. it too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. A little a little after Valentine's Day, right? We got a right. got a little love. We got a little love hanging on, and yes. uh, you know, leftover love. <laughs> exactly, I like that. Yeah, leftover love. So, but it's good. It's really fun. Uh, Sean Blakemore uh, plays uh, my he lead. Used to go to uh, Faithful Central. Small world. I know. Yes, and his wife is a dancer. Oh, she is. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, didn't know yes. That. Okay. Um, and so, um, and he played the he he's Lockwood. Okay. The oh. our our installment is called for the love of Lockwood, Lockwood but two. it's for the love of Lockwood too, two. because the first one oh. was uh, with him and Eva Marcel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Who's so on those TV have, one show that's she's now on a yeah Virgin. born again Virgin yeah, yeah with Gabrielle Dennis my yeah. girl Gabrielle Dennis I love that yes. show it's yeah super cute mm-hmm. I watched it yeah. um, so what's next for Nadine you've done pretty I'm doing much this. everything what's right next? well not everything I've just begun but okay you're just but thank you for service. saying that yeah. that's very sweet of you to say you know a lot more I you know. I, I have a play that I'm working on. I know Patricia yes. Cuffey Jones. Patricia Cuffey yeah. Jones. She goes to my Bible study. Oh, I love it. Yes, yeah, yes. Great. She's awesome. Incredible mm-hmm. playwright. Mm-hmm. As soon as I read, I mean, like I was like halfway through it, and I was like, okay, don't call her yet. Just get to the <laughs> end. You know, like it's just such a good. She's just got a really good grasp on mm-hmm. storytelling, mm-hmm. and does it so beautifully. And mm-hmm. uh, and this show that we're doing called Love Soul Deep, uh, that will be at uh, the Acme Theater in. La, on La Brea in Hollywood 
um, the weekend of March 20th through the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Get your tickets now. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a great cast, Mm -hmm. great storyline. I fell in love with the character immediately. Um, But what's really interesting about this play is that it's happening in two different story line uh timelines oh that's interesting yeah okay. so part of the show is happening in the 50s 60s and 70s oh, that's interesting. yes and the other half of the show is present day so mm. so it's just a really cool way to kind of see how love is timeless yes you know things, it should be it should be yeah and yes. things are and timeless in the sense that um that people will always kind of react to people in the same way. Mm-hmm. There's different influences. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's iPhones instead right. of like, you know, Texting. A, a, yeah, it's all that instead yeah. of like sending a, you know, I don't know, telegram or, right. or an actual letter. <laughs> right. But love, love exists it, to a certain extent yes. in, in a bubble where yeah. no matter what your timeline is. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, the, the feelings that we have are the same feelings our mothers had yes. and our aunts had and grandparents. Yeah. Um, and so it's a really beautiful story. So come on out and see amazing people. Dorian Missick, Simone Missick, okay. um, Kelly uh, Jenrette, who's an incredible, She's incredible actress. She's in a bunch of Kmart commercials. Uh, yeah. A bunch of Kmart yeah. commercials, and just and will be. You'll look out for her on ABC. She just booked a pilot. Go so, ahead, yes. Kelly. Congratulations. That's so, fantastic. So on so social media, her. you yes. are at Nadine Ellis. I am at Nadine Ellis on Twitter. I am yes Nadine Ellis. Yes. Nadine Ellis, because I wasn't going to be Nadine Ellis 23. Um, and uh, and Facebook, I'm Nadine Ellis. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this After Buzz TV Spotlight on with the beautiful, talented Nadine Ellis. I am at Madison Chase Fit. Don't forget to leave your comments, subscribe, and like us for sure. Hey, hey. Cheers. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. After the views Buzz expressed you later. herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.